as you can see, this is going to be about adding data to a database from a CSV file. So if you've been web scraping, you may have collected a CSV of your output and you may want to either insert it into your own database or pass it to a client to put into their database. Uh, they may also use pandas. You may use pandas if you're using matplotlib or plotly or various other packages you may be using pandas and we will be using SQL. I'm using MySQL but the same will apply with slightly different syntax if you're using Microsoft uh, SQL Server. So let's begin. So I've documented this on my website redandgreen.co.uk and the output and also all of the code is on the website. Uh, just go to blog which is just up here top right and uh, what I've done is the code which I wrote for this was all done in Jupyter Notebook and um, why did I use Jupyter Notebook um, because it allows you to view and preview um, what you're actually getting from the database and it's just kind of a, a little bit more visually easier to to understand and to to appreciate so Let's begin. The first thing is I've created sample CSV file, claims.csv. It's um, a load of gibberish, really. But what, um, what it actually represents is a real life project, which is the output of some web scraping. So uh, my client had um, patient number, claim, and status, and he was performing some lookups to find the patient number and check whether their claim had been accepted and then whether he could uh, chase the money or not. So, um, header, which you can choose to ignore or not with pandas. And then we've got five claims. In real life, obviously, thousands of claims. So, makes no makes no difference to the code. Import pandas as PD. So, we're importing pandas as usual. If you're familiar with pandas, you import it as PD. It just means you can uh, use PD instead of typing pandas. It's kind of uh, the, the, the convention. DF stands for data frame. So if you're just doing your main data frame, then DF is fine. If you've got more than one data frame, then you'll have DF1, DF2, DF3, or call it, you can call it anything else other than DF, but DF is kind of logical because it tells you it's data frame. There we go. So what we just saw in the text file, the uh, the notepad file, which let me bring that back up again and we'll just compare. So there you see, patnum claim status. And here we've seen that it's created an index. So you've got 0, 1, 2, 3, 4. So that's 0, 1, 2, 3, 4. And then we'll say bye bye to the CSV file. So we don't need that anymore. So we've now we've got the data in a data frame. We can, uh, we'll keep it there for the time being. So the next thing we want to do is we want to connect to an existing SQL database. Now I've already got a SQL database. You might have seen it when I did my Amazon project, scraping Amazon. <laughs> scraping Amazon for web scraping books. And I was doing price tracking. So if you've not seen that video, um, that will also show you some SQL database stuff with uh, PHP my admin and also MariaDB. So MariaDB, import MariaDB, import sys. And what we're going to do is try to establish a connection. And I've just got some, obviously, use something a bit more secure than this in real life, but. For my purposes, user 2, password 2, host. So my Raspberry Pi is on this IP address. So I'm just using the IP address as the host. Um, the PC which I'm showing you this on is 192.168.1.7 and that the Pi is 1.9. Standard port 3306. And the database, I've got an existing database called News, which if you saw my series on um, web scraping news sites, you will recognize that database name. So I'm going to connect to that database because I've already got some data in it. And we're using try uh, connect con equals myadb.connect. So we're creating a, an object called con. And then we will use con con.cursor to become cur, which is 
um, a cursor object which we can then use with execute and then execute will run as you can see down here it will run a select or an insert or an update or a delete um, okay so thus connecting to the existing database then we want to get some data from it so we're going to select the first date results so um, title story of these are existing columns in my news database so the database was called news the table was called t news i've put a t in front so that i could it was the table uh, publication and i'm just choosing to show eight results from my database where the publication was independent.co.uk and there we see so four title publication incur um print because all we've done there is select them we're not actually displaying them so this is where we need to say for the title and the publication we just want to um print the title followed by the story and there we go we know that the database is connectable and let's come down here now we want to connect to a new database and prepare to insert data frame and what i've done is actually gone into my raspberry pi which is uh, pi 4 with running MariaDB and if you look at the bottom of my article on the um, redandgreen.co.uk um, there you go sudo mysql minus u root minus p so if you've set up MariaDB which is kind of beyond the scope of this article you will know that you can log in to your database with this and then you have root privileges and then you could administer, create new databases. And, um, sorry, there we go. And MariaDB, once you get here, you can then run some of the other commands, which I've listed on, um, they're actually at the bottom of here as well. So sudo mysql minus u root minus p, you can create a database so we would need to do that which i've already done create a user now if you're on if you're on the raspberry pi you can create a user and you'll see this probably more often where it says local host just here um but because i'm connecting to the database from a different computer uh you need to use um you need to use the percent sign so you see here we've got percent sign after the app and then we've got local host so if you're connecting from another machine don't use local host you need to use percent okay and then where were we we had got as far as connecting your database and then we tried a connection um and obviously i've given it that password when i was in uh mariadb running the commands that i've just shown you and um, once you've got a connection you can try to connect to it if you get an exception then obviously you quit and you say error connecting to mariadb we create a cursor object again so you always need to create a cursor object once you've got a cursor object you can do things with the cursor object so most commonly execute and i've hashed this out but this was actually what i what you need to run once which is to create the table create a table and really this is the this is a good bit so <clears throat> pay attention if you need a coffee go and get a coffee come back have a biscuit if you want right for row in df iter iter tuples so what does this mean row so we know what row is row is one that's a row that's a row that's a row that's a row. obviously uh row is the horizontal bit of the data frame um df so df was also what we just looked at but df was all of it so it was the whole object which contained all of the rows and the column so basically a data frame is a two-dimensional array 
which which consists of columns and rows. Cursor.execute. So we're going to iterate through each row in the data frame using iter tuples. And a tuple is an immutable object which contains all of the information on each row. So patient number claim status. So these here are matching the column names in our original CSV file, which if I bring that back up, do you remember? You see that we've got patnum, which is that, claim, status. So those follow all the way through. So they follow through from the CSV into the data frame and then from the data frame to the insert statement. Um, and then we're just going to call them the same thing once we arrive in the database as well. But uh, I've skipped ahead a bit here. Right, so cursor execute, which is the cursor object, which we know about, which is what we created up here. We created the connection, and then we set the connection.cursor to the cursor object. And then with the cursor object, we then run execute, and that does the insert. And we're inserting into patient three. <laughs> I have made um, a couple of test data, a couple of test tables, patients one, patients two. Um, and by the time I got to patients three, I had it working. So there we go. Values. These are placeholders and these are um, percent S. And what we're going to do is each of the, each of the rows we're going to insert each of the, the contents of each of the columns and each of the rows into these placeholders. And then the place, those values from here get transferred into, um, into these variables, which will then get inserted. It prevents uh, SQL injection and in, uh, yeah, read about that if you're interested. Row.pat, num, row.claim, row.status. So, um, these, so these values are going into these placeholders, which go into the insert statement. And here we go. This is the result. We've got PHP my admin. So this is just kind of a viewer, which views your database. You, if you've got, um, you can use, I forget the other names of them, but <laughs> there's other ways to view a database. You don't have to use PHP my admin. Um, but it's quite lightweight and all you need is Apache and PHP <laughs> and this works on MySQL. So if you're on a, a Windows Microsoft SQL server, then you'll have your own graphical user interface to view your database with. But this is what I use to view MySQL slash MariaDB with. So you can see patient three, which is the table name example db was the database name which you saw me show you the code for um create database example db so i created the example database which is that patients was the table which was created here on line 114 which i've now hashed out because i only want to make it once um and there we go if you go to browse, you can see patient number claim status. And if I just um, kind of scroll, make it a bit bigger. Yeah. Oh, it's not making the image any bigger. Sorry about that. Um, but there we go. There we have the information all the way through from the original CSV file. So but this has been interesting. I will post some code and link to um, my website on the comment section in the video. So I hope this has been interesting. And if there's any questions or uh, yeah, comments, thumbs up, algos, keep YouTube happy. Yeah, thank you. Thanks for watching. Bye.